couple hours uh, rested from earlier this morning, and we uh, understand the current tally is a 9,057 vote margin, which is still going to be confirmed through the process of the uh, counting by the various county auditors and the like, and then the canvassing board and the like. And uh, understand, Savvy Daily News reported uh, earlier that uh, Representative Ember is saying that uh, he's preparing for recount to ensure that all valid votes are counted and the will of the voters is met. And that's entirely appropriate to assure that the will of the voters has been tallied correctly and accurately. Uh, this process should not be political. It's about something far more priceless. It's about the integrity of an election and a democracy, which is fundamental to our democratic process and is inviolable in our system of election and government. As President Obama said in his press conference earlier today, every election, regardless of who wins and loses, is a reminder that in our democracy, power rests not with those of us in elective office, but with the people we have the privilege to serve. The people of Minnesota spoke last night, and that final tally is being determined. At this point, uh, Yvonne and I are in the lead. It's certainly beyond the margin of what has historically been any uh, change in the vote total in the recount process in Minnesota. But until the canvassing board has met and made its uh, decision, until the governor and the Secretary of State have issued a certificate of election, and of course uh, that outcome has not been finally determined, and we don't presume that. We're also cognizant, however, that uh, the clock is ticking, that two months from today, the next uh, governor, duly elected by the people of Minnesota in the election yesterday, uh, will take office, and that there's a huge amount of work to be done between now and then. Uh, and, and that there will be a very important decisions that will be need to be made, such as the early opt-in for Medicaid, which has to be signed, as I would uh, if I take office, by January 15th, or $1.4 billion of federal money would be lost to the state of Minnesota. So the people of Minnesota have a right to, to know that their verdict has been one that has been accurately and correctly tallied and verified, uh, and that the integrity of our election process has been upheld. They also have a right to that being done in a timely, expeditious manner so that the outcome of that election can be carried out as they have determined it to be. And uh, we will be in involved in that process in a way that is meant to ensure the integrity of that process and that the will of the people is both correctly uh, tabulated and then upheld and then carried out as uh, expeditiously as possible. Better respond to questions. When you Senator, look at the 9,000 vote total, do you see that for Representative Emmer that that is simply insurmountable? Do you see any way in which that would be reversed with that total? Well, I, I think all I can do is go back to you know what we've had a chance this morning to research in terms of the the, the, the change in, in the number of votes uh, in the last couple of decades in Minnesota, and uh, that it's never been anything close to that that margin that number of votes, and certainly nothing that we can find that exceeds that. But again, I mean, the process is intended to assure the people of Minnesota that uh, every one of their votes that was cast legally has been counted and counted correctly and accurately, and I fully support that, as does Yvonne, because uh, that, that's our responsibility, as I think the President Obama said it very well, the, the, the power here resists, rests not with politicians, but with the people. And, and, and the, the, the foundation of that electoral power is the integrity of the election, and people should be assured of that. Uh, and I would also say that I think anyone who casts aspersions uh, on that without strong, uh, overwhelming evidence uh, is acting extremely irresponsible, and we will not do that. Senator, Senator you managed to swim against the national Republican tide. How do you explain that? What's your analysis of how you won? Well, we, had, uh, we worked very, very hard and had tremendous support from all our friends and supporters. And I think we're here today because of that and because of the tremendous uh, strength Yvonne has in Duluth and St. Louis County, which was very important to us. And you know, the voters of Minnesota uh, continued what they have the previous uh, couple of years with a, a split decision. Uh, they just uh, reversed the decision. And whereas the last two years, the, for a couple of, eight, couple of years, the the governor has been a Republican and the legislature has been DFL. Uh, now it would appear 
that uh, certainly the legislature is Republican, by a, by a total vote of a margin of about 1.2 percent, and at least at this point, currently, uh, the DFL executive branch is uh, about 0.43 percent. So, you know, again, the, the people of Minnesota, through that verdict as it stands today, decided to, the, that they wanted to continue a divided, a shared government responsibility between the two parties. And if uh, this outcome is confirmed, then I it will accept that as the, the will of the people and will work. I put in calls to the two presumptive leaders of the uh, Senate and the House and expressed uh, through voicemails but my desire to work uh, cooperatively and constructively, and, and that was what we'll en endeavor to do. I know I'm ahead. I believe I'm ahead. Uh, I, don't, I, I believe that uh, the, the votes are very likely that, that the final tally will be in our favor, but I'm not going to, I'm not here, I'm not declaring victory. I just be presumptive to do so, and until the process has been carried out and the people can be assured of the accuracy of that that final tally until it's been certified by the governor and the secretary of state then it's not official and senator, i abide by that that's the law of minnesota senator um you talked about the overwhelming amount of work to do whomever becomes governor can you and representative emmer at least begin transition teams given this uh given the amount of work that needs to be done uh and putting together an administration uh, in what might be a very short period well, of time. Well, I can't speak for Representative Emmer. We, we haven't had a chance. We, we thought we might spend the, this morning beginning to discuss that process. I, I have not begun to do so, and, and now uh, obviously that's been uh, been delayed with some other considerations, but, but the clock is ticking, and uh, assuming this, this uh, process res resolves itself as it's intended to by the timetable established by, again, in a bipartisan way by the current governor and the current legislature, it will be resolved sometime either at the end of this month or early December in time for the next uh, the, the governor to take office on January 3rd. That's the assumption. That's so, as it should be. And so there's a lot of time to be done. We haven't figured out the, the you know, this is new, new, new uncharted territory. And I, we're assuming that the, the, tr the money for the transition purpose uh, through this, this state appropriation is not available and would not be until. So we're going to have to figure out how to put this together. But we, we certainly cannot just. Uh, wait around uh, for even uh, a matter of a, of a couple of weeks uh, because, as I say, there's a huge amount of, of work to be done and a budget to repair and uh, agency appointments to be uh, screened and considered and uh, all that work is uh, sh gonna have to be compressed enough even within two months to much less a shorter time. Senator, Senator have you heard from Governor Polanyi? I've not, no. Do you expect to? Are, okay. I heard uh, you uh, President Obama's office called and he's gonna call this afternoon. <clears throat> Talk to Emmer directly. Uh, Senator Governor Valenti has indicated that the Constitution requires that the present governor will remain in office until the new one is sworn in. If the recount goes into January and farther, uh, do you have concerns that the Republican legislature and a Republican governor would implement an agenda that you would not support and that the voters might not? Well, I think Governor Plenty is accountable to the people of Minnesota as uh, all the rest of us are and I, I would commend uh, the example of President Obama who called the uh, new likely to be Speaker of the House last night and uh, also uh, Senator McConnell and and uh, expressed his willingness to work uh, in a responsible way. Again, as he said, to re respect the the decision of the the, the, the people who are the the, the the authorities in this matter. And uh, again, I it's just, I think it's uh, incumbent on all who have any role in this matter whatsoever to get this matter resolved, uh, according in accordance with the law, but as expeditiously as as, po as possible within that framework, so that there, a new governor can be sworn in on January 3rd. That's the will of the people. That's the law. Of, Minnesota, that's the Constitution of Minnesota, and that's the, the people have a right that that, that be upheld. Senator, Senator, you are, Senator uh, the, uh, the Republicans have made it clear that they're going to assemble a legal team, and, and they've already paraded out a lawyer. What, what are you doing? Well, we're, we've begun uh, discussions with an attorney, but uh, you know, again, our, uh, our intent is to work within the legal framework this is not this is not a legal matter this is a matter established uh, under the procedures of minnesota election law uh, the integrity of which was upheld uh, two years ago after a protracted process uh, and you know the, the canvas and my understanding is that the secretary of state and the, the uh, uh, chief justice have already appointed the members of a canvassing board it's a you know the three we know that three of the four 
judges appointed to that were appointed by Republican governors, but I, I mean, that's a fact, but I would expect them to operate as the previous canvassing board did with complete uh, transparency and integrity. And, and again, they have a responsibility that I'm sure they recognize that, that goes beyond any kind of partisanship or any kind of politics. This is, this is about upholding the integrity of election. This is not, about, this is not a re-election. This is to determine the outcome of the election that was held yesterday, where the, where the will of the people of Minnesota was expressed. And now it's the job of those who are responsible, starting with the county auditors and through this process, to count those ballots accurately and properly and tell the people of Minnesota finally what the outcome is. And, but to carry it beyond that, I think, is and, and to take it into the political realm and some of the comments that have already been made that are, are very much political in their in their. Uh, nature, I think, is, is especially at this stage, uh, highly irresponsible. So, so will you, you not are ultimately uh, elected? What, what becomes of your tax proposals that might might have been more uh, had a more friendly audience with a Democratic-controlled legislature as opposed to now uh, a legislature that will likely be hostile to tax increases? Well, uh, governors propose and legislatures dispose. And so I'll propose my budget, uh, as I would anyway, uh, as I believe is best uh, for the people of Minnesota. And I always expected the legislature would have its own 201 opinions on the, the matter, and, and, and they certainly will uh, in this situation. But as I've said before, you know, absent uh, employment growth, which is what we're all looking for, but in the short term, uh, for every dollar of revenue you don't raise, you either have to raise that uh, the way I would propose, you have to raise a dollar of revenue some other way, or you have to cut a dollar of spending. <laughs> and so uh, ultimately, they, they're going to be uh, challenged with the same reality that, that we will in preparing, preparing our budget, which is it's going to have to balance at the end of the... in terms of the, the health care money, that is just an executive order if you become governor, you would not need the legislature's approval? That's correct. Sign so, and that will be the first thing you will do? Uh, that, well, I'll take the oath of office, but right soon after, after that. You take the oath, <laughs> after you take the oath, so that would be the first within thing. Within the first hour. But, but are you worried about the time passing? Well, yes. I mean, January 15th is the yes, deadline. absolutely. It's one of the, re one of the reasons and only one of the reasons that this matter needs to be resolved. So the next governor can take the oath of office on January 3rd as the Constitution of Minnesota intends uh, him to do. And as the people of Minnesota expressed by their uh, collective will yesterday, I mean, it, it, it was a close election. I mean, the people of Minnesota in, in the aggregate had produced a close election. It's our responsibility, all of us involved, to not to try to alter that outcome because it happens to be close, but to, to, to do our, our part as, as citizens of this democracy, to see that it's upheld. And, and anybody who, who deviates from that, I think, is, you know, should be just considered out of bounds. And I'd say that on, on air, both sides uh, uh, or all sides of the political system. This is about something that's really profound. This is about the integrity of an election. You look at countries where the election results are not upheld, uh, it's, it's, it undermines the, the foundation upon which our society rests. I remember back in 2000, and Vice President Gore went through the process, and the United States Supreme Court ruled in early December on a 5-4 vote. One vote decided the next President of the United States. In a lot of countries, there had been a revolution, there would have been anarchy, there would have been a military coup, and he said, I disagree with that decision, but that's the process that was followed. The decision was made, and he called the, the president to be Bush and conceded the election. That's the way you handle this in a democracy. Senator Dean, are you referencing, it? Uh, you say some people have made some remarks, are you referencing the, the chair, Chairman Sutton? I'm not pro referencing anybody in particular, except I, I read that the comments that have been made previously this morning, and I'm just saying that that's, you know, that shouldn't uh, be what's driving this process. It should be about determining the will of the people of Minnesota as, as it was expressed yesterday. Can I put it another way? Is Chairman Sutton out of bounds? I'm not going to comment on that. Do you have a team that goes around the state observing any recount, local recounts? You know, at this point, I'm prepared. I've worked with county auditors in the past. I was state auditor, and you know, I respect for them. Uh, they're elected in most cases. A couple of cases, they're appointed. And you know, again, I, I think the, the, the process that's intended to be followed is that they will go back and they will, you know, use this period between now and I may not have this exactly right because this is on short notice and little sleep. But somewhere between in the next seven to ten days, they're meant to go back and they're meant to re recount, not a formal recount, but to retally. The votes that were, you know, and, and, and assure, and most of this is on machines that are scanned, a high degree of accuracy. 
and then they're supposed to retabulate and, and submit that, the can, and then the whatever it is, the camp, you know, the board meets and then and the like. So this this is you know, this is within the boundaries of how this is established to be to be resolved expeditiously. I mean, we got. Uh, few legislative races that are down to votes in the teens, I believe, you know, same process. You know, the votes counted, carefully counted, if it's less than half percent, recounted, and then that tabulation determines the outcome of the election and people proceed. If that's, if that gets undermined because of other considerations, policy or political, as I say, I mean, then the basic integrity of our election process is undermined, and, and that the Minnesotans, I don't believe, will and should not stand for that, allow that, or tolerate that. But so Senator, to, to be clear, clear, are you do you have a legal team? Do you have poll watchers have begun, and ballot guards? Don't have a legal, guards, don't have a legal team at this point. We've begun uh, con discussions with a, with a couple of attorneys just in preparation for this because we're going to make sure that this is followed. And would it be your campaign uh, or the party that would run? We haven't, we haven't resolved that yet. Uh, so, Senator, regardless of what you're prepared for, I mean, or what you want, do you expect, are you preparing for this to be a long, drawn-out legal battle, regardless of what I'm you no, hope? I, I'm, I'm not, because, again, I don't think the people of Minnesota will stand for it, and they shouldn't. Senator Pruttner Solon, uh, your reaction to what happened in the state Senate, and what challenges could that uh, bring to your administration if you are to go ahead and uh, and be elected, what, what challenges will there be? You know how the system works here. Uh, the Senate in control of Republicans for the first time. Well, um, first of all, we knew that there was a wave of uh, anti-incumbency and that there was anger with the Democrats as we were moving into this election. Um, but I have to say I was very surprised at the turnover in the House and the Senate. And I feel very sad for the loss of my colleagues who I've had a very good working relationship with. But I have worked with both sides of the aisle. I've worked with both houses. And I've managed to pass some pretty progressive um, legislation when it comes to renewable energy and and uh, energy conservation and our greenhouse gas reduction goals with health care issues I've been able to work with people of many backgrounds and I anticipate that I will be able to work as well with this legislature as I have in the past and I have to say that there are many of the Republicans I count as some of my closest friends. I have a high respect and regard for them as I do my own colleagues in the Democratic Party. But would you anticipate tax increases would be dead on arrival? You know your colleagues, the Republican colleagues in the Senate, they've voted against them categorically right down the line. I I, I can't anticipate where they're going to come from. I would suspect that it would be difficult for them to talk about tax increases. But I also think it will be very, very difficult for them to put together a budget that has nothing but cuts and to get all their members to vote for that. So I think that we'll have to come together to um, work together in a compatible way to pass a budget. In terms of your current margin of victory, how important was it, do you think, to have you on the ticket and bring a lot of support to the Dayton uh, ballot? Well, I have, uh, I have a good following in my district, but I have to say that Senator Dayton also is very well respected in the uh, 8th Congressional District in northeastern Minnesota in the Duluth area on the Iron Range. And uh, we have a lot of friends up there. And I, I think that they still were very key in helping us to come in with a, a majority or a um, a winning number here. Do you think there are a lot of people who voted uh, maybe for Chip Kravac and then also voted for Mark Dayton? Is it appears that that's what happened, yes. Is that, does that strike you as uh, almost unbelievable? It does to me. <laughs> it's a great loss to, to uh, have uh, Congressman Oberstar retiring at this time. What advice, if any, has uh, Senator Franken imparted? He's been through this. Uh, I, I spoke, uh, Senator Franken called me a short while ago and he just is, said much the same, just how important it is to uphold the integrity. And he pointed out that, that you know, in his case, for over six months from the, the, the count at the end of the election night, actually early the next morning, to six months later, the, the, the vote was, the was, uh, difference was 950 votes. Just to clarify, are you taking a basically a hands-off policy right now in the recount? No, no, we're just, well, I mean, I, I, we'll follow the law. You know, we'll act, we'll act within accordance. We're still making this assessment. This is not something we anticipated or had prior discussions about. We had, you know, had 
conversation this morning, uh, and we'll have others. But you know, this is not something for the candidates or the campaigns or the political parties to, to try to manipulate in any way at all. This is about the integrity of the election process in Minnesota, and in a bipartisan way, uh, the last legislature and governor uh, enacted something as Minnesotans, not as Republicans, not as DFLers, as Minnesotans. I mean, we have a standard here in Minnesota. This is not Florida. This is not some other parts of the country where elections get manipulated after the polls have closed. This is Minnesota. And we have a, a great tradition here of a, you know, a, a governor who was the incumbent governor who uh, acted selflessly so that state government could proceed. We have, you know, the examples here uh, where people acted with, and with, with the highest integrity and, and that's what's called for by all of us now, in, in, in word and in deed. For the last two years you've been running for this race, you were even thought, thinking about it before then. What will you do with yourself now that... Well, I wasn't planning to go anywhere anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to continue the Are you going to be putting together your transition? Are you going to be monitoring the recount? I'll certainly be monitoring, but again, you know, this, this has its own procedure. I, you know, I'm not going to have any conversations with... Any, myself with anybody in the Secretary of State's office or county auditors or anywhere else. This process is, is politically, or you know, not poli politically, but in, the, in, the, in, in terms of the public arena, I mean, this is inviolable. And, and, and it's, it's, it's set up that way for a reason. If, they have any, if we're going to have any kind of conversations, it'll be through uh, a proper legal representation. And again, we haven't worked that out. But this is not, I mean, what will we be doing on a parallel track is something we need to talk about in the next few hours and a couple of days. How, how do we proceed uh, you know, independently, as, 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 as I say, because I don't expect and it wouldn't be appropriate to have public funds involved. But on the other hand, I, you know, we are going to need to begin discussions with people. If, this uh, margin is upheld, or even all but one vote of it is upheld, and we are certified as the next governor, lieutenant governor of Minnesota. We have an administration to put together, and uh, we need to be ready on January 3rd to, to take office and put people in the positions of uh, agency heads as, as completely as possible and, and uh, make appointments to the boards and commissions uh, vacancies that take effect on that day. And I mean, everything is established with the expectation of the people of Minnesota that this is going to get resolved in an expeditious manner and the next governor takes office with an oath on January 3rd and begins to take that responsibility with the elected leaders and the legislature following the next day and then the government goes to work to, for the people of Minnesota once again. Senator, the polls were all over the board the last week of the campaign. In your heart, were you pretty certain this was going to be close? I always thought it would be close, yeah. This close? Uh, I think you'll find, uh, I can give you a couple of, uh, of uh, People that I told uh, right after the primary, I thought it would be between 0.1 percent and 1 percent. Senator Dayton, have you thought of if I had that kind of crystal ball to use all the time, I believe me, I'd be uh, you know doing a lot better in other things. Senator, if you thought it was going to be that close, why didn't you have a legal team in place in the case of a Marine? No, because I, again, I, I have comp I have confidence in the, the veracity and the integrity of the process. I, I have confidence in the fact that the, those officials who have responsibility for this at the county level and going up to through the Secretary of State who upheld the integrity of the election two years ago and was just re-elected strongly by the people of Minnesota to uphold that and who is now, along with the Chief Justice, who is appointed by Governor Pawlenty, appointed a canvassing board of, of the Secretary of State and four judges, three of one of whom we can't determine, three of whom, two of whom were appointed by uh, Governor Carlson and one by Governor Pawlenty. And, and that's just a fact, but that's not even relevant because, again, once they take that oath of office to be a judge, they uphold the, the integrity and the Constitution and the law, and I expect them to do so, and I believe they'll do so. Senator, how about a transition? Will you begin planning immediately? Do you have any names or people that you... we conversations, but we haven't uh, made any... The only person I've offered a job to is uh, Yvonne Pretner solon and she's going to be if she is elected in her own right, so... Uh, There's a lot of Democratic lawmakers looking for work. Are you interested in any of them? <laughs> we'll, we'll, you know, look at, look at uh, all the resumes that come to us. We're Look for the best people. Senator Look. Dean, what are the closeness of elections like this say about the electorate and the polarization in, in, in well, our state? I mean, it's, you know, I, I, 
the, 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 great, the greatness of democracy is that people decide. I mean, I think it says people want to follow a middle, a middle course. And again, they, they, they had had a checks and balance the last uh, years with the DFL legislature and a Republican governor. And now they've apparently flipped that by, by the narrowest of margins. And, and some elections are close. And, and, you know, and then, as I say, whether it's presidential in 2000 or where else it takes place, Senate in 2000, I mean, then, you know, you, you resolve those matters and, and proceed. I mean, the people, if the people decide it's going to be a close election and they're, they're collective voting, then, again, it's incumbent on the rest of us. So we work for the people to, uh, to accept that and, and to proceed accordingly. And, and that's what people have a right to expect. Are you going to keep your campaign staff on during this? We haven't even, you know, again, we haven't. They, they all deserve a vacation, first of all. Uh, they first, first of all deserve a good night's sleep, and then a brief vacation. And But, you know, we, 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 we're, we're, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to keep working for the people of Minnesota, and we tend to do so. Are you sure you want this job? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.